Okay, so we're going to try and continue our conversation in our last lesson. Um, so our first problem is one base of a trapezoid is four inches, more than twice the length of the second base. So I can say B1 is equal to four inches more than twice the length of the second base. So B1 is equal to two times B2 plus four. It says the height of the trapezoid is two inches less than the second base. So height is equal to B2 minus two. It says if the area is four inches squared, find the dimensions of the trapezoid. And then it gives us the area of a trapezoid. So let's see if we can kind of decipher this. So I'm going to go over here to OneNote. Okay, so they're kind of throwing stuff at us, um, but we can we can definitely figure this out. So I've got a trapezoid here. Let me see if I can draw this right. So there's my trapezoid. Let's call this base two, this base one, and this is my height. Okay, so if you forgot what a trapezoid looks like, it's kind of like this thing, right? Any shape like this. So, um, to start off, we have the area is equal to one half B1 plus B2 times height. Okay, and we just saw that height is equal to B2 minus 2. And then B1 is equal to 2B2 plus 4. So that was given to us in the problem. That's what they told us a second ago. So if I come over here, I can plug that stuff in. And then it also gave us the area. So let's check. I forgot what it was. 4 inches squared. I'm going to make sure. Okay, so area is 4 inches squared. So what I have here is I can reverse these two. Just reverse these guys. Okay. And then the area of this trapezoid is four inches squared. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> so I've got is one half two B two plus B two is three B two plus four. So I just combine these like terms, and then I've got B2 minus 2 equals 4. Okay, so now what I can do is I can start to distribute some of this stuff out. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this one half, right? So I can either distribute it to one of these factors, or I can move it to the other side completely. So I'm going to do that by multiplying by 2. So I get 3B2 plus 4. B2 minus 2 equals 8. So, right, I can get 3B2 squared here. Negative 6B2 plus 4B2. And then negative 8 equals 8. Okay, and so I'm going to combine some like terms here. I've got negative 6 there, so that's negative 6. 
So negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. And don't forget, whenever we have a quadratic like this, our goal, right, our whole, not our whole goal, but one of the goals is to set this quadratic equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. So I've got negative 16 here equals 0. And this is the quadratic we're trying to solve. And we can solve the rest of the components from here. All we have to do is solve for base 2 by factoring. Okay, so a times c. a times c is going to equal uh, 3 times negative 16. So 16 plus 16 is 32. So 32 plus 16 is 48. So negative 48. Is that right? 6 times 3 is 18. Yeah, it's negative 48. Okay, so plus minus 1 minus plus 48 equals negative positive 47. And then let's do some more here. Let's think. Um, plus minus 2 minus plus 24. So negative plus 22 plus minus 3 minus plus 16 we just did that guy so minus plus what, 13 yeah 48 is divisible by 4 and it's an easy one it's going to be 12 right so minus oops, minus plus 8 and then let's see. It's not divisible by. It's not divisible by five. It doesn't end in five or zero. It's not divisible by. No, it's divisible by six. So plus minus six. And then minus plus eight. Okay. So that's going to give me negative two and positive two. So if I go back over here, I can actually split this guy up. I've got three b two squared. And I'm looking for the terms that add to be negative 2. So that's going to be positive 6 and negative 8. Right? They add to be negative 2. So I've got plus 6 b2 minus 8 b2 minus 16 equals 0. So out of these two I get b2 factors out and I'm left with 3 b2. I oh, don't know. No, that's give me just a second. Okay. We can do this. Um, the GCF out of these two terms is 3B2. So if I factor 3B2 out, I'm left with B2 plus 2. And over here, I've got negative 8 that factors out. Which equals 0. Okay, so now I've got B2 plus 2, which can factor out. So I'm left with B2 plus 2. And 3b2 minus 8. And I've got two solutions here. I set both factors equal to 0 and solve them out. And then get rid of my extraneous solutions. And I get b2 equals negative 1. And b2 equals 8 over 3. Okay, so my base 2 is 8 over 3. And the reason is because right here, that should be a negative 2. I don't know why I did that. Subtract 2 from both sides, you get negative 2. Um, make sure I did this run right. So negative, a negative distance does not make sense in our problem. Okay, so let me make sure, and I've got to do this, it's just part of it. I think it's in inches. Yeah, okay, so the area was in inches squared, so these dimensions are going to be in inches. But negative 2 inches does not make sense as a base, okay? So 8 over 3 has to be the answer if I did my math right. Okay, so if I come over here. Base 2 we just found. So this side length is 8 thirds. And the only thing we have to do from now, from here, is to solve all the rest of this stuff out. So I'm going to find the height first. So the height is going to be 8 thirds minus 2 
And I'm going to convert negative 2 to a fraction. So I've got 8 thirds minus 6 over 3, which is 2 thirds. Okay. And over here, I can plug in 8 thirds. So I can get 2, 8 thirds plus 4. 2 times 8, 2 over 1 times 8 over 3 is going to be 16. So 2 times 8 is 16. 1 times 3 is 3. And then 4 can convert to 12 over 3. Okay, so now I can start to add these across. So 16 plus 12, that's going to be 28 over 3. And 28 is not divisible by 3. So we're going to leave it as. 28 over 3 inches. And we are done. We found the height, the first base, and we found base 2. And let's just make sure this comes out to be 4 inches, right? 1 half, and we're going to plug this in to 1 half B1 plus B2 times height. We're going to make sure it works out. So we just found that. Just found that base 2 is 8 thirds. And we found that base 1 is 28 over 3. And we found the height to be 2 thirds. So I've got 1 half. 28 plus 8 over 3 times 2 thirds, and this should come out to be 4. So 28 plus 8. Well, that's going to be 36 over 3. 1 half, 2 thirds. And so if you take a look at this, right, I can multiply across the bottom across the top so I think that'll be a little easier to see so 1 times 36 times 2 1 times 36 is 36 36 times 2 is 72 2 times 3 is 6 6 times 3 is 18 and 72 divided by 18 let me just check here I'm pretty sure let's see what happens when I multiply by 4 so 4 times 2 times 18 is 36, so 4 times 18 is indeed 72, okay? So, that is 4 inches squared, so that is correct. So hopefully that wasn't too much of a terrible experience for you. But that's kind of what's expected whenever we're doing these types of problems. Um, hopefully they won't give you too hard of a one on the EOC. But that's kind of what you're doing here. Okay, so let's take a look at the next problem. It says a garden measuring 12 meters by 16 meters is to have a pedestrian pathway that is W meters wide installed all the way around it, increasing the total area to 285 meters squared. What is the width of the pathway? Okay. So <clears throat> let's write down some of our knowns. We know the dimensions of the garden is 12 by 16. And I forget, was it meters or feet? Probably meters. Yeah, it's meters. And we enlarge it by W meters. Okay. So 12 meter by 16 meter, and we enlarge it. And we enlarged it by what, uh, W meters? Yeah. So that's our unknown. So we don't know how far we've enlarged it, but we know the total area is 285 meters squared. And they want us to find the new dimensions. They want us to find the new dimensions in W. Okay, so may not look it, but it's actually pretty straightforward as long as you are able to draw a picture and visualize exactly what it's asking me for. Okay, so over here, 
we have this length is 12 meters. We have this length is 16 meters. Okay. And we're enlarging the size all around it by W. So 12 by 16 is not equal to, eight, to 285. So that might be a little confusing at first until you realize that they're enlarging this space. That doesn't look right. I'm going to erase some of these details and draw it in nicer. try and draw it to the best of my ability. Um, so what we've got is that this entire rectangle around the inner rectangle, that's our walkway, okay? So if I kind of look at this guy, Right, I'm thinking, okay, this is my walkway. And so, right, nice little gray color here. That's refreshing. I'm like freaking Bob Ross here. Okay. So, my little walkway there. And then inside, yeah, inside is going to be green. That's where the flowers are. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay. So, what I'm trying to do is solve for W, right? So, I know this width here is W. And if that width is W, then this guy down here is also W. So that's one thing I know. So I'm saying the distance from here to here is W. And then the same thing is going to happen here, right? I've enlarged this area to include this sidewalk. Okay, so what I've got here is on each side length, I've enlarged by 2W. Okay, so. We've got this area. We know area is equal to length times width. Okay, so what we have is one side length is 2w plus 16. So that's one length. The other length is 2w plus 12, which is equal to 285. Okay, so they gave us the, the area is 285. So if I multiply this guy out, I've got 2w times 2w which is 4w squared. I've got 2w times 12, which is 24w. I've got 16 times 2, which is 32w. And then I've got 16 times 12, right? So 16 times 12, it's going to be 2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Area zero down, one times six is six, and then one times one is one. So 192, okay? So plus 192 equals 285. So now I can start to get rid of some of this stuff. So I'm gonna combine like terms and then subtract 285 because when we're factoring, we want our quadratic to be equal to zero. So 192 minus 285 should be negative 93. Let me check, make sure I did that right. Okay, yeah, negative 93 equals zero. And so in this case, we're gonna have not so nice numbers as the last time. So A times C is gonna equal four times negative 93. which is negative 372. And so I'm trying to find numbers that multiply to be 372, but add to be 93. So let's try, I don't know. Let's see if it's divisible by, 
See if it's divisible by six. Well, it is divisible by six. So if I take this divided by six, I get minus plus six and plus minus 62. Add to be negative 372. So negative six plus six is going to be positive 56. And then 6 minus 62 is going to be negative 56. And we're looking for positive 56. So we're going to split it up as 4w squared minus, is it minus? Yeah, minus 6w. So these two pair. Plus 62w minus 93 equals 0. So out of these two guys, I can factor 2w out. So I'm going to do that. So 2w factors out, and then 2w minus 3. And then over here, right, thirty-one factors out of these guys. So I've got thirty-one, and two w minus three is left equals zero. So if I factor two w minus three out of both of those guys, I'm left with two w plus thirty-one equals zero. And I'm going to get two solutions from this, and one of them is not going to make any sense. So I take 2w minus 3, set it equal to 0, and get 2w equals 3, and w equals 3 over 2. And over here, I get 2w plus 31 equals 0. And this is in meters, right? So 2w equals negative 31, and then w equals negative 31 divided by 2. And so 3 over 2 is going to fit the bill. And so make sure, yeah, it's going to be 3 over 2. So if I come up here, right, this distance here is 3 over 2. And so is this distance, so 3 over 2. So 3 over 2. If you add those two together, you get six over two, which is three meters. So I'm increasing each side length by a total of three meters, okay? So this side length is going to be 15 meters. My bad, I was looking at the 16 instead of the 12. And then this side length over here is going to be 19 meters. That's what it is, yeah. Karen wants to plant a garden and surround it with decorative stones. She has stones to enclose a rectangular garden with a perimeter of 68 feet, and she wants to cover garden to cover 240 feet. What is the length and width of the garden? So she wants to plant a garden and surround it with decorative stones. So she has enough stones to enclose a rectangular garden with a perimeter of 68 feet, and she wants the garden to cover 240 feet squared. Okay, so we've got a situation here. Right? We've got some stones, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just going to kind of do this quickly. So these stones, she's only got enough to cover 68 feet. I'll make sure I read that right. Perimeter is 68 feet. And then her garden area is 240 feet squared. So, knowns. P equals 68 feet. So that's all the way around. And then area is 240 feet squared. Well, if the perimeter is 280 feet, so I've got, or 68 feet, I've got length, width, length, and width, okay? So I've got perimeter is equal to 2L plus 2W. And then I've got area is equal to length times width, okay? So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to set these equations up and then plug them into the other equation, okay? So over here, 2L plus 2W is going to equal 68. So I don't know the length and the width yet, but I'm going to solve it out. So just, you can solve it with the other way around. If you solve for W, it doesn't matter which one you solve for first, but I just like L. I like to solve for L and replace it down here. 
So I'm going to do that. So if I subtract 2w from both sides, I get 2l is equal to negative 2w plus 68. And then I get l is equal to negative w. And then 68 divided by 2 is going to be 34. Yeah. So negative w plus 34 is equal to the width. So I'm going to plug that guy in here. So area is equal to negative w plus 34 w. So that whole thing was substituted in for the length. And then the area is 240 feet. So I've got. So w distributes. So I get negative w squared plus 34w, and my area is, what was it, 240? Yeah, 240. So I get negative w squared plus 34w equals 240, okay? So I'm going to subtract that 240. And then multiply all these guys by negative, so I get w squared minus 34w plus 240. So I just multiplied this guy by negative 1, and what that did was switch all these signs and kept it equal to 0, so I can easily factor it now. So a times c, 1 times 240. And then my b term is equal to negative 34. Okay, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be 34, but add to be negative 34. Multiply to be positive 30, 240, but add to be negative 34. So I, need, I know my, both of my factors are going to have to be negative. So I've got negative, what is it? Yeah, negative 10 and negative 24. Okay, so negative 10 times negative 24 is going to be 240, but they're going to add to be negative 34. So that works. Um, so I'm going to split this guy up, w squared minus 10w minus 24w plus 240 equals 0, and I'm going to start to factor this, so w, w minus 10, negative, yeah, negative 24, w minus 10 equals 0, and then I've got width minus 10, and then width minus 24. And just, just without loss of gener generality, right, both of these dimensions are going to work out in our problem. But for me personally, I always choose width to be the uh, shorter side. So I'm going to do w minus 10 and set it equal to 0, and I'm going to choose the width to be 10, okay? so. That's equal to zero, so w minus 10 equals zero, so I add 10 to both sides. Right, and I get w equals 10. That's a solution. And then if once I have w equals 10, I can find the length up here. So length is equal to negative w, which is negative 10 plus 34. And so length is 24 feet. Okay, so the width we found to be 10 feet. And the length we found to be 24 feet. That's kind of what's going on here. Okay. And that was annoying, which the next one is probably going to be also as equally annoying. It says, find two consecutive odd integers whose product is 99. There are two different pairs of consecutive odd integers, and only an algebraic solution will be accepted. Okay? So we're going to let n represent the first odd integer. Okay? If n represents the first odd integer, right, what I can do is I can think about odds. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So if I look at odd numbers and I look at a, 
like one single odd number. So let's take three and five, for example. Every odd number in the pair is exactly two away. Okay, so if I want to generate all the odd numbers, I'm gonna add two to each odd number to get the next odd number, okay? So I know that whenever they say consecutive in the problem, right, the problem said consecutive, so you can go back and look at that. Consecutive means that they're one after another, okay? So three and five are consecutive odd, in, odd integers. Five and seven are consecutive odd integers. So in this case, I'm saying n, sorry, n times n plus two, because the next odd integer is two away, is going to equal 99. And so what I'm gonna get is n squared plus two n equals 99. I'm gonna subtract 99 from both sides. I get n squared plus two n minus 99 equals zero. And then I'm gonna to start to factor, okay? So I'm trying to find two numbers that multiply to be negative 99, but add to be two, okay? So that, what it represents is negative 99 is the number that I need to find. And then two means that the odd integers are two units away, okay? So if this is the case, I'm gonna try some numbers out, but write double digits. If I have two single digits, it's divisible by 11. So I'm gonna try plus minus 11 and minus plus nine, which is gonna equal 11 minus nine, which is positive two and negative two, but I need positive two. So 11 and negative nine work. So I can split this guy up. I've got n squared plus 11n minus 9n minus 99 equals zero. And then I've got n plus 11. And remember, we're gonna take the positive version, right? We want the positive version of whatever this guy spits out, whatever the solutions are. Oh no, it was saying it's two pairs, so we were actually good. So, never mind. Um, n plus 11 factors out. So I've got n plus 11 and n minus 9 equals 0. So my two solutions, right, if you look at this, if I set n plus 11 equal to 0, I get n equals negative 11. And over here, if I set n minus 9 equals 0, I get n equals 9. And so if I look at consecutive odd integers, right, what comes after 9? Well, it's 11. So 9 times 11 does work. But if you look at the other side, right, you've got 7, 5, 3, 2, no, that's not 2, 1, negative 1, negative 3. And you can actually find two pairs that work here. And that's why they had a negative 11 in our solution. So if you take a look here, negative 11 and negative, excuse me there, Negative 9 work. Negative 11 times negative 9 is positive 99. Sorry. Negative 11 times negative 9 is positive 99. And then 9 times 11 is positive 99. Okay. So both pairs work. Okay. So 7 is kind of a challenge problem. I'll go over it next time. I'm kind of done. Kind of out of time. Um, 48 minutes. That's how long I went with this one. I'm going to have to edit some parts out. Um, but I hope this helps. These are some contextual problems, and they're not meant to be easy, okay? But they are meant to be on grade level. They are supposed to help you out. And they're probably what an EOC would ask for a quadratic problem that's pretty tough, okay? So you guys take it easy.